Hello and welcome to this video. Um, this is the 11th video now in the series of principles of mechanical ventilation. In this one we're going to cover the mode, the mode of ventilation that we know as pressure control. Okay, so we're going to cover pressure control. Um, and we're going to sort of cover it by comparing it to one we've already covered. So we've already looked at volume control. So we're going to we're going to try and get our heads around pressure control um, by sort of comparing it to volume control. And I'm going to bring up a ventilator waveform here, and you're, and you're going to have a look at it, and we'll and we'll see what we're doing. Okay. So um, we're going to use the ventilator screen is going to be using the example of assist control, pressure control, right? And remember that we um, we talked a lot about assist control. And he said that in assist control mode, you can get controlled breaths and you can get assisted breaths. And we know what these are. If you don't need to go back and watch the videos before, because we've covered all this already. So assisted breaths are triggered by the patient, but are identical to control breaths. Control breaths are triggered by time based on the respiratory rate that we set. Okay. So when we looked at volume control, we said that we, let's just write VC over here. Okay, so we set the volume, right? And we set the flow, okay? And um, the resulting variable of that, and the, the variable that's, sorry, the, I keep saying variable is like a, a word we use, like pressure is a variable and flow is a variable and volume is variable. But in volume control, we control volume and flow and pressure is variable, right? Pressure varies based on um, how compliant the lungs are. Like if they're easy to open, the pressure is going to be lower for a given volume at a set flow. And if the, the compliance is very bad, if they have very poor compliance and the lungs don't open easily, then the pressure is going to be quite high for the same given volume and flow, right? So pressure varies in volume control. In pressure control, and you can probably imagine, we, we control the pressure. That's why it's called pressure control. Um, so we, let's just put PC, we set a pressure. Okay, we set a pressure control, which I'll explain in a second. And we set a time. So it's, it's, it's similar in that we've set two things here. We set a, a volume and how fast we want that volume to be delivered. And in pressure control, we set a pressure change and how long we want that pressure change to be applied for. So the factor that's variable, well, it's factors, is going to be volume and flow. Okay, they're going to be variable based on, again, the lung compliance, how easy the lungs are to inflate, how stiff they are, how floppy they are. Okay, so in pressure control, we, we've set the pressure change and we set how long we want that pressure change to be applied for to the lungs, okay? And then as a result of that, we're gonna get a change in volume in the lungs because if you increase the pressure in the lungs, we've seen in the compliance videos, we've seen in the pressure volume relationship videos that if you create a change in pressure, there's gonna be a change in volume, okay? So in, in volume control, we were taking the volume side of that, picking a volume and seeing what pressure we end up with because the pressure is going to vary. And in pressure control, we pick a set pressure, we pick a change in pressure, and then we're going to end up with a volume and that's going to vary. Okay. So if we imagine, let's take a different color here. Maybe it was, it was this one. If we imagine a, this is a pressure time graph. So we have time on this axis and pressure on this axis. Okay. So uh, we we touched on PEEP and we talked a little bit about what PEEP is, positive end expiratory pressure. We're going to do a whole video on it, but for now, just take it, take my word for it that it's just an elevated level of pressure in the circuit, which is, includes the patient's lungs, that is there all the time. It's there at baseline. So instead of the we're going starting from zero pressure, we start from slightly higher. So let's say our PEEP is five. Okay, so this is our baseline, what we call a baseline. So this is, this is the patient in exhalation, then this, they're in the expiratory phase right now. Uh, and then we decide we want to deliver a breath. Okay, so in pressure control, we, what, all we do is we just pick how, how high we want this pressure change to be. So let's say this is 25, okay? 
So that means that the difference in pressure between our peak and our the peak pressure here is 20, right? So our pressure control is 20. And this is our pressure control, okay? Because it's the change in pressure in the circuit. So we set how high we want this to be. This could be 15, 20, 25. We, we select how high we want that to be. Um, and then we say, okay, how long do we want that 20 of pressure to be held for? Okay, so this is our inspiratory time. So we set a pressure and we set a time that we want that pressure to be applied for. And if you think about Boyle's law, the larger the change in pressure, the larger the tidal volume. Okay, so the tidal volume is going to vary, but we can change, we can kind of get the tidal volume we're looking for by adjusting how high or how low this change in pressure is, this pressure control is. Okay, and that's it. That's that's the breath. That's all we do. And then we just repeat this 10 times a minute or 12 times a minute or 14 times a minute, whatever, whatever we're doing for our respiratory rate. Okay, so this is really all there is to pressure control. We set a pressure. In this case, it's 20 because it's 20 centimeters of water above the five that we started with, giving us a peak of 25. So we set the 20 of pressure control and then we we did this for a certain amount of time. Let's say this is one second. OK, so we set 20 of pressure control for one second. And as a result of these two, we're going to get a tidal volume. So let's have a look at the ventilator screen and then we can um, see what we're talking about. So this is the same ventilator that we used for the volume control video. I wanted to keep it consistent. Um, so let's look at, just remind ourselves what's going on here. So the, remember that we set some variables on the ventilator. These are the ones that we set. We pick all of these things, all of these blue boxes here, we pick those. Um, and up here, we have measured variables, right? This is just to re-familiarize you with the ventilator. These, these things here, we don't pick them. These, these are being measured by the ventilator. The, the ventilator is measuring the peak pressure. It's measuring the mean pressure. It's measuring the peak, measuring the IE ratio. These are all measured things. We don't select these, okay? But we do select these boxes down here, so let's look at them. And really, the, the part that we actually care about for this video is this part. And it's conveniently been given this bracket with the PC here. This is what actually relates to our pressure control, right? We set a pressure, and we've, I've used the same ones here for the example, and we set a time. So this over here is our pressure waveform, and you can see that this is essentially what we've just drawn here, right? We have zero at the bottom, we have time on the, uh, the x-axis here, and we have pressure on the y-axis. And you can see that that's about, that. well, that is 25 there, okay? So that where the, the top of the green is and the yellow. So that top there is 25. You can see the 20 there, it's a little small, I apologize for that. But So we can see that we've taken the pressure in the circuit from five, our baseline pressure, which is our peak, okay? And we've elevated it to 20 above that five, okay? Which gets us to 25. And we've held it there for one second, right? So that's pressure control, that's all we do. And as a result of that, as a result of that pressure change, we get a tidal volume. So this is our tidal volume over here. 579 and I picked this one from all the pictures I took because it kind of emphasizes that nobody would pick 579 mils as a tidal volume but no one would it, no one would choose that and set it into the va ventilator right it's just we'd pick a whole number like 580 or 600 or something right so you can see that this this is just that's just the tidal volume that's been generated as a result of our pressure change okay so that's basically pressure control so it's, it's one of those things which people think is complicated, but it really isn't. If you understand pressure volume relationships, like as you increase the pressure in the system, the volume's gonna increase, right? And, in the, and similarly, if you're on volume control, you increase the volume in the system, then the pressure's gonna increase. As long as you know that relationship and you understand Boyle's law, pressure control is pretty simple. You elevate the pressure to wherever you want it to be, and for a certain amount of time and as a result of that you're going to get a tidal volume okay and then you do that a certain number of times a minute right in this case we're doing that 10 times a minute but say 10 times a minute we're going to elevate the pressure 20 above our peak for one second that's pressure control okay so um let's um let's calculate our ie ratio really quick right so we talked about this before. If we want to do IE ratio in pressure control, 
is actually really easy now because we have we've got a set i time right so our i time is one second now what's our expiratory time well our total cycle time is six seconds right um, which means every six seconds we're going to get a breath our inspiratory time is one second so one second of that is inspiration which means five seconds of it is exhalation so our ide ratio is one to five okay and you can see up here our ide ratio is one to five right so one thing you may have caught out on this picture is that it looks like there's a sort of mistake in in the image if you've really got the concept of pressure control down you'll see here that our peak pressure is 26 and you say to yourself oh ha hang on a sec why is the peak pressure 26 when we've got five of baseline pressure and then 20 of pressure control shouldn't the peak pressure be 25 and if you're thinking that then congratulations yes the pressure should be 25 this this system right now is hooked up to a test lung on a ventilator so it, they're not completely accurate and this won't always be 25 but it should be 25 if we're doing exactly what we're saying here okay so if you thought that then well done because you've you've got it that's it should be 25 but it's 26 just because we're on a test line okay so that's pressure control um in the next couple of videos we'll start to delve a little deeper into it um but if you understand pressure volume relationships you can understand pressure control